So um, during some of the talks that you've heard on cos Planck cosmological results and, and uh, the Planck data analysis, it's been mentioned several times that we've been doing simulations with Planck in order to uh, develop our analysis method and also assess them. And some of these simulations, um, most of these simulations are actually based on a model of sky emission, the Planck sky model, that has been used for these simulations. So I will try to describe uh, quickly uh, what's in there. So this is the plan. Let's start with the general philosophy and the objectives. Um, so this is a PSM, Planck Sky Model, wish list. First of all, we want uh, to model the sky as a multi-component model. Multi-component means there is an interpretation of, of, the, of the sky emission into different parts. So it's not just maps of sky emission, total sky emission at different frequencies, of course, but also uh, separated into different components. What we would like, of course, is as, to have as perfect a representation of the real sky as we can. So for each component, we would like uh, to provide maps of IQ and U as a function of frequency and as a function of pixel. Um, uh, that's as good as possible, as perfect, as close as reality as possible. We want also to provide values of parameters of interest. Think cosmological parameters, statistical properties, not just maps of, of emission. And of course, we would like that to be as compatible as possible with all observations. But also what we want is a tool for simulating this uh, sky emission and its observation with Planck that's statistically representative and parametric, so we can change parameters, see what changes in the analysis, what's the impact on our interpretation, also turn on and off several effects to see what's their impact on the science we get with Planck. So this is how the construction of the sky model fits in a general picture of the analysis of multi-frequency observations. So if you start from observations at a number of frequencies, here say 30 gigahertz, 70, maybe take Planck maps, add some other maps, we have to do some analysis of these observations. So do component separation and interpretation, measure parameters, dust temperature, things like that. Interpret that and put that into a model which describes each component with maps and also statistical properties like power spectra, number counts, emission laws, all of that in a cosmological framework described by cosmological parameters. And for instance, we want to use the same cosmological framework to model SZ clusters and CIB emission and CMB. Then this can be used to make simulations that can be compared to observations, either to validate the model or the data interpretation, but also can be used to develop component separation methods and test them. And um, Planck sky model development activity is sort of in that box, includes some interpretation of the observations, writing all of that, and developing the tools to make simulations. OK, so let me move on implementation of, and status. So over the, the past few days, I've been um, asking myself the question how to, to best give an overview of the different possibilities that are implemented in the Planck sky model, given that for each component, it's possible to pick between different options, Gaussian, non-Gaussian CMB, synchrotron described with uh, fixed or varying spectral index, or maybe running, etc. and. Uh, um, Finally, the answer struck me as, as obvious. It's just not possible to do that within that talk. And so I encourage you to check the PSM paper for details, which uh, I don't have time to, to, to give. What I will describe is what the specific changes that have been implemented for the FFP6 simulations that have been used and mentioned uh, to you already a few times. One of them is uh, a template. The template emission for galactic dust at 100 microns has been replaced um, with respect to what's described in that paper. And also, the CIB emission has been changed. But quickly, still a, a very quick overview of what are the components that are present in the, in the FFP6 simulation and in the Planck sky model. So we have synchrotron described here with 
two maps, one map of amplitude and one map of spectral index, and this is a, a power law of three. Free free with just an amplitude and a, a fixed emission law, fixed for a temperature of, uh, I believe, 7,000 K. Um, spinning dust emission with that type of bump here, described with a map which gives the amplitude and fixed emission law. Then dust emission is described with two gray bodies with these spectral indices, as, as has been mentioned already by Marc-Antoine, and amplitude and temperature for each of them. There is one single map for CO lines, which is scaled, uh, which is used for, for three uh, line emission uh, with constant line ratio. Um, so there is, there is CIB, and I will say a few words about CIB. Uh, CMB, one single map. Um, and, um, and SZ effect. So the SZ effect is modeled with first order relativistic corrections. It includes 1.3 million clusters with masses of uh, uh, more than 5, 10 to the 13 solar masses. Kinetic SZ is included. Uh, the CMB model in that particular reference data set is non-Gaussian with an FNL, local FNL of 20.4075, and the weird number was chosen so, so that people could not guess in advance what it would be. Um, it's simulated with LMAX of 4,500, and lensing is included at the level of the maps. The lensing potential, of course, is properly correlated with the, T, with the CMB itself. The CIB is modeled from a distribution of galaxies in 10 shells of density contrast at different redshifts. I will, I will describe that in more detail. There are, of course, also radio and infrared sources described with catalogs. And I won't say a word about polarization because, uh, because for the moment we are just uh, delivering the temperature maps. And by the way, um, these simulations should be made available soon so that people who want to analyze Planck data can also play with the simulations. So what has changed? Um, this is a patch of sky for dust emission at f 857 gigahertz. We, as was modeled, oh, sorry. Um, let me back up. Yes, okay, so as was modeled um, on the basis of the schlegel finkbeiner davis model, and this is what is observed at, by Planck at, uh, at that frequency. This is the North, uh, North Galactic Pole. And we see that the maps are slightly different. Here there is more structure, which is actually mostly due to CIB, but also what we see here is that the, the dust emission is not completely properly modeled. So we thought that we should probably replace that by something which is based on, on Planck data. And um, so um, so this is what we, what we did for FFP6. We took this map and we, we applied a, a localized Wiener filter which actually filtered all the small-scale uh, fluctuations in regions with very low galactic emission, very low dust emission here, and kept basically untouched the regions where there is dust emission. Of course, one of the problems with that is, is, uh, is that CIB fluctuations remain there. The other option would have been to filter also these regions, but in that case, we lose in angular resolution and maybe in amplitude in these regions. So there was a compromise. This is, this is now another region. This is at lower galactic latitude, at minus three. So this is what we had in previous simulations from the SFD model with small scale structure added because this map originally is at nine arc minute resolution. And if you take simulations for Planck with nine arc minute resolution, it makes component separation in particular to detect sources and, and SZ clusters too easy because there is not enough dust emission on scales where you try to pick these compact sources. So here there was, there was uh, uh, some fluctuations added that are Gaussian, but are scaled with, uh, with the amplitude of the underlying dust emission as, as measured by, in, I mean, in that nine, nine arc minute uh, map. 
But unfortunately, when you compare that to the Planck map, we see that there are actually too many fluctu to, there's too much fluctuations here. So, so what we did is, is basically take the Planck map and, uh, and that one had a, a resolution high enough that we can use it directly and scale that map for FFP6 simulation. So this is what we get on, on FFP6, which is essentially that map with some filtering here that we don't see because of the color scale. Okay. So now let me move to the CIB. The CIB is modeled with a co within a cosmological framework with a standard cosmology, some cosmological parameters. Then um, class, uh, the class code is, is used to compute CMBCL and also matter P of K as a function of redshift and actually um, compute uh, the, the density contrast on shells of, of uh, different redshift. So this cosmological model is used consistently for modeling CMB, cluster counts, velocity flows, shells of density contrast used for the CIB. So this is how we do that. We start with a big covariance matrix, actually power spectra. The power spectra of, of CMB here, for which we have SEDs described here, which will be then redshifted as a function of redshift, and we have some uh, um, uh, distribution of light for each type of population. So in the end, we produce CIB maps at the various Planck frequencies, and we can compute the power spectrum, and this is how it compares with what was observed in the Planck early paper. So, so the, the, the lines here, uh, the solid lines are what is given by the model, the points is what is measured in the Planck early paper, and the uh, dotted lines is the model which is fit to the observations. We see here there is, there is a small lack of power at, uh, at 545. A fraction of it is absorbed by the recalibration uh, that, that was necessary on that channel. So the power spectra are close, but not exactly consistent. So what we decided to do is, after producing these maps, we readjusted their power spectra by multiplying their uh, um, harmonic coefficients L by L uh, to fit uh, the average to, to readjust uh, uh, the power spectra. Also, what we did is we added uh, some decorrelation artificially between lowest and highest frequencies to take into account the possibility that there is decorrelation between 143 to 17 gigahertz and 857. Um, so after that, is, these are the new CIB spectra, which, which are um, you know, in, in good agreement with uh, the model which was put together for the early papers. OK, I'm almost done. And so th these are maps. So you can see what the map look like. So just a few more words about, about what output of the PSM. So a run of the PSM actually produces a lot of maps, like hundreds of maps. Um, there are maps which describe the components. There, there is all the ancillary data, spectra, everything is written. So you have all the information about the sky and about the observations. So for instance, for for each of the components, you have uh, maps for temperature, polarization, etc. And um, you have also uh, these maps integrated in the bands of your instrument and, and uh, observations smooth to the beams, to the circular beams, and some in information for traceability. This is then passed to the next step of the simulation, which actually scans this simulated sky to produce timelines similar to the Planck timelines. Okay, so let me summarize now. One of the difficulty in doing this exercise is that we are trying to make a model which requires several maps, actually more maps than we have measurements. And so it's difficult to, to, get, uh, to get maps which are independent um, and with no contamination. So this is the current difficulty with putting together this model. So, so the message I, uh, I'd like to pass is that for the future, we need more bands. 
Okay, so, sorry. It's a little late, asking for more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe not for the next, next experiment. Okay, anyway, so just, just two more slides, what the PSM is and is not, to summarize. So it's not a set of sky emission maps at different frequencies. It implements a model that is an interpretation of existing observations. Uh, it's very flexible. We can turn on and off components, effects, noise, options, etc. It's not the real sky either. So we always have to check simulations and understand their limits. So what it is, it's a parametric model with parameters for cosmological framework and all components. Components are representing using maps of parameters, catalogs, statistical properties. It's data plus code, a set of data together with their characterization and uncertainties, and prescription to assign values to all of the parameters of the model on the basis of these observations. It's a simulation tool that is code to produce a complete set of component maps and their observation with a set of instruments, which is not specific to Planck, and there is a li library of many useful software tools, and it's a very useful investigation tools for developing optimal, quote unquote, data analysis pipelines, and for investigating the impact of varying assumptions and model parameters. Thank you. Thank you, Jacques. Uh, questions for Jacques? Everyone wants a break. Oh, a question here. Uh, so, uh, Jacques, at the end, I did not understand what, what do you put for the dose. Is it the uh, filtered thing binary uh, model, or is it now based on the Planck observations? No, so, so all, the, all these options are implemented in the PSM. So when you make your PSM run, you can, tr you can decide. For FFP6, what is put there is the 857 dust map, which has been scaled back, I mean, back engineered to reproduce uh, a map at 100 microns, which is then scaled with the color deduced from the SFD uh, model. So this template dust is the Planck observation, but is filtered to remove small scale fluctuations on in the regions of low uh, galactic uh, uh, column, column density. What we need to do in the next step is probably improve that because it was done only using one channel, which is uh, the 857, and we can do it with several channels. What we, what we obviously will also implement is the new bundle that's being developed by Marc-Antoine. More questions? I assume that was a typo on the 79 arc. Yes. Six well, it's normally six point one, isn't it? For for the um, the FDS ninety nine model. F FDS. That would explain why you've got too much small scale power if you've added too many. I don't know. Well, yeah, I think the, the map which is used in the model is nine arc minute. I just asked Marc okay. Antoine who confirmed that. Okay, maybe. It's but smooth. we can. Uh, okay. I mean, we can check. Okay, let's thank Jacques again. So we have just over 25 minutes. We'll come back here at five minutes past the hour.